What's up, everybody? We are back for another episode of the Foul Plugs Moto Show. I'm Dave with the Collective Experience, and joining me is the man himself, Manny Fresh, Manny Jones. Manny, what's going on, bro? What's going on, big dog? <laughs> Not too much. Uh, you know, another week of racing, another week of championship points getting tighter and things shaking up and taking it down to the last few motos. So uh, pretty, pretty amped to get into it. Um, also on this episode, we have a uh, fan favorite, a, a you know, big homie of ours. Uh, we've got the one, the only Mr. 722 out of Antic on everyone's favorite Supercross racer. Uh, so we're really excited to get into, uh, you know, picking his brain on what he thinks about the season, what he's got going on, some cool things coming up. So uh, that's going to be really exciting. Um, Manny, we just kicked off, what, Colorado, Lakewood, and Max. Um, what, do you, what was your takeaway, man? Let's, let's, let's get into the 250s and 450s. Like, what was your main takeaway from the race? It was, it was good racing. I, like, like how I said, like, I was just really kind of pumped on seeing, like, how Zach is really pulling through the, with this whole, you know, this whole championship and really managing it. Like, how we would, we've been talking about it, like, week in and week out and seeing how he's going to manage it coming down to the wire. And, and he's, he's really just been showing that championship resolve and, and, and really just the same energy we used to see when he was on the 250s. So I, I was really pumped, happy for him to see it. Um, what was your take on, on just let's start with the 450s? Um, I, it was cool to see Zacho, like, like be up there. I, you know, I, I keep uh, – I don't want to say I discredit him too much, but I keep thinking, like, all right, well, you know, he, he might have an off weekend where he's, like, 10, 15, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like – and the dude always pulls through, you know what I mean? He's, he's very, very consistent. And not to say that I think he's going to fall off anytime soon. I'm just like, you know, there's so much talent in the 450 and 250, and so much could happen. I keep thinking that something's, you know, that he's going to get caught by, like, you know, a, a freak accident, almost like he did at, uh, at Millville. But even that wasn't a freak accident because he managed it so well. So um, it, it, it's, been, it's been really cool to see him, like, move to the front. Um, I kind of thought a few more guys would, would be up there. Like, obviously, we knew AC would be solid. Um, but I kind of oh, thought yeah. like Barsha and Baggett would be, up, would be up there a little bit more. Um, but mm -hmm. we ended up getting a treat by seeing Eli Tomac turn into Eli Tomac oh. after, you know, not seeing him for so long. So that was actually, that was really, really cool to, um, to, to have, again, more parody, which is another word we keep talking about on this, on the show, which is everyone just, um, you know, really keeping it unpredictable in this class. So uh, yeah. I really, really dug that. I think there were some really cool battles um, going back, like, you know, Top top three had some battles. Five through eight had battles. You know, ten through fourteen had battles. So everywhere on the track, uh, you saw somebody you know really mixing it up. And I think a big thing to take away from this one was all of the guys that made mistakes. And now no one's perfect, but yeah. like Barsha's get off. You had AC's get yeah. off, and a couple of runs off the track. Um, yeah. You know, just everyone like dabbing a foot and sliding the rear end yeah. and almost getting kicked off and. I think it just shows how treacherous the track was as well as how much these guys are pushing. So um, as a race fan, I was all about it. I thought this was the, one of the dopest races, a little bit yeah. different race surface. So I, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, definitely as a race fan, just to see the guys push like that. And, and you, know, when, you know they're really pushing when these guys are starting to make mistakes. It's either they're, they're, they're pushing really hard or the, the track is really tough. And I think it was a good combination of both, honestly. And, and like you said, it was, it was good to see an Eli Tomac sighting. Uh, late in the season, uh, he, that, that was more so the Eli Tomek we thought we were going to see. Obviously, we know he was going to be really comfortable here. Um, we talked about it. Um, but, yeah, it was good to see him. It was good to see, you know, the Cowboy Boys finish 1-2. Um, so, overall. Um, but then again, um, you know, it, it started – it was tough to see kind of the things start to slip out of Adam's hand, Adam's grasp for a little bit. Um, so, uh, but going down the list, though, with some people that I was actually really pumped on seeing, Jake Masterpool got a top 10. Yeah. Overall, I was How super was that? pumped. On, I was super pumped on that. I know we've been keeping an eye on him weekly, and he's just yep. been progressively getting better. And I was just super pumped on seeing that. Um, another guy that we were talking about, I know last week I was kind of like, "Where's Benny Bloss?" Uh, he finished with an eighth this week, so it was like, and that whole top ten had a, a bunch of guys that you know I was I was actually happy to see kind of yeah. finish really well. Um, I was glad to see Vogel do well this week um, because yeah. you know he's had a rough season. I feel like. Um, so it was good to see him, you know, get, get comfortable and actually kind of get put, put in some good results before the season ends. Mm -hmm. um, and that was good. And then uh, obviously, you know, it, it's, not, it's not a race if we don't see one of them yellow bikes up there. Max Anstey still got a seven. So, you know, it's good to see those, those yellow Suzuki's. They're making it look good, man. He's making that bike look really good. Exactly. And like people like, again, like 
I, I don't think they realize like how how awesome Max Ancy's been riding. Like the guy's been over in the GPs for so long, and he's coming over and he's putting a non-factory bike up there with factory guys. Um, so that's um, that's something that really speaks volumes for you know how 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 well that team's performing. Um, yeah, it's, it's just been really cool. Um, Manny, who do you think is was your favorite privateer from the weekend in the 450 class? Like who stuck out to you? Ah. Uh... I would say like uh, the, the two people that I like I said I was I was high, I was pumped on seeing I was pumped on seeing Jake Masterpool yep. and and, our, and then Justin Rodbell he's been riding so well every yeah. week and it's like it's, it's like so now well. I have my eye trained to find him on the track because yes. I know he's gonna be somewhere around that top fifteen or higher yep. and it's just good to see him like that every week really riding that well and it's just yep. like coming from a, like a relatively you know unknown guy. He's he's popped up on the circuit this this outdoor season and really kind of made a name for himself. Exactly. Um, yeah. Again, shout out to the SGB guys. Um, Rod Bell is slowly becoming like the privateer hero. That like, I I'm excited to see what happens to him next year. If he does do the full Supercross campaign, keep yeah. an eye on this kid. Like, it, it it's gonna he's gonna be doing some some pre some pretty amazing things. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this is his first year making like a full pro run at all the races. So you know he's only gonna get better from here. Yeah, that's super dope. And, you know, with more time doing it, I just only foresee him getting better. Oh, most definitely. Um, our buddy Cade Clayson um, yeah. showed up, too, and uh, tried to tried to give a run to his buddy uh, A-Ray, and he was running pretty solid. Um, yeah, that, 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 he definitely, it was good, good to see him out there, too, giving a good run. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, he's no stranger to, uh, you know, some of these gnarlier tracks. He got racing Canada for a while, and those, those tracks, uh, namely oh, Gopher Dunes, right. that place, <laughs> crazy right. tracks. Crazy tracks, uh, so yeah, really, really cool to to see Cade make an appearance and uh, and 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 you know put, put some wheels on a on a really cool track. Um, bumping up to the uh, to over to the two fifties, um, we saw a, a little bit of a mix up. We saw blue bikes up there, but not the blue bike that we all expected, man. We Cooper, <laughs> Cooper was business, man. Like yeah, yeah, he was all business this week, and yeah. I was super pumped on that. Like he looked yep. really good this week. It looked like the Justin Cooper of old. I would say the Justin Cooper of last last season, we'll say, not of old because he's still young, but Justin Cooper of last season. I mean, this was Justin Cooper we, I think we were all expecting this season to see, you know, to get out front, run the pace. He was out there, you know, letting, letting Dylan, like, know, like, hey, I'm, I, I'm a force to be reckoned with out here too. So it was, it was definitely good to see him go 2-1. Exactly. And one thing that they talked about in the broadcast was like, he is the next guy, like, because for, for Randy's moving up for, to 450s, like, yeah. Cooper's going to be their guy. Like, you know, they're, they're going to have an influx of, of new fresh faces, some young guns coming up that are, uh, that are already out there racing. And um, yeah, Cooper's going to be the guy. So I think the fact that he's as talented as he is and ha having a ride like this, get the momentum wave started towards the end of the season, carry that wave towards 2021. You're, you're the yeah. guy, you're the new Ferrandis, you know what I mean? So um, it's, yeah. it's definitely cool to see. Um, and again, the blue crew bikes, man. We're at elevation. There's some gnarly uphills. It's, it's level. almost it's, unfair it's watching the blue crew bikes. <laughs> like the like the uphill roller section that triple. I think yeah. they greased it maybe ninety five percent of the time. A few of them came up short because they had a you know a tight inside line. Maybe kicked yeah. out a little bit, going up the face of it. But everyone else was just face casing the, that thing, trying to triple. They had to later back it down and just double and then roll the rest of it. The, yeah. the blue crew guys were like, oh, that's cool. I'm still going to send it because I've got an extra 10 horsepower <laughs> on you guys. <laughs> that, that, was, uh, yeah. that was pretty dope. I mean, it was, it was so glaring about, you know, how, how much better the blue crew bikes are. Um, yeah. It makes you, you know, as, as two engineers sitting here, which most people probably don't know, Manny and myself uh, being mechanical engineers, like you almost scratch your head at like, like what, what are the other teams going to do at this point? Like what can they do to like, to get there i think they all made fun of yamaha for their for their reverse engine and you know keeping keeping uh uh the the the, the, the mass like more centralized and stuff like that like from an engineering standpoint i'm like you guys can't really beat that engine design right now like it just it's such a solid like power yeah. plant like you guys gotta come correct with something different you guys need like a whole new feature to be the back these guys are doing yeah, it's it's hard to kind of to to kind of shit on that design that now. When it first came out, everybody's like, "Oh, what are they doing?" Da, 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 they yeah, to do right. It. And, and but now it's like everybody's trying to scratch their head and pull teeth to figure out what what they can do to get any type of horsepower out of their bikes because it's just they're literally head and shoulders above the rest of the field when it comes to the power, and they make it known 
on those tracks like this, like especially even with them being at elevation of just how much more separation they get from, from bikes that are well known to be fast. Like we know like the Geico bikes aren't slow bikes, yeah. But yeah. KTM when bikes are usually next, fast. Yeah, when, you put, when you put them next to these Yamahas, it's just a complete different ball game. They're just getting slapped on like crazy. It's almost disrespectful at this point. It's almost <laughs> it's just, they're just disrespecting everybody else. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's real disrespectful. It's a it's a it's an unnecessary flex at this point. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, we we did see J Mark get close though. You know, to the front yeah. um, a, a couple times in that first moto. So. Uh, yeah, it was. It, it's uh, it's definitely getting down to the wire. Um, I think Jmart. It's almost a little bit too late. He's going up against um, a powerhouse team in terms of power, uh, horsepower, as well as one of the most talented 250 riders that we've had in a very long time. He's almost giving me vibes from like Villa when he was on his 06, 07 campaign. Um, yeah. Just how much better he is than the rest of the competition. So, uh, I think. I think. Uh, another point aside from the from the other blue bikes that I wanted to point out was this is how about how about Jared Fry and Nate Thrasher this week? Two yeah, other guys Thrash, yeah. Out, thank you for reminding me. Did not expect them to do as well as they did this week. Yes. I was super impressed with how they finished up ninth overall for uh, Jared Fry and a 13th for Nate Fra Thrasher. I was super pumped on that. You can that's more than you can ask for, honestly, at this at this stage. Exactly. You know, getting just thrown into the series late getting out there. Obviously, they're on really great bikes, but I, those are really good results. I was, I was definitely pumped to see them. I'm like, whoa, hold on. When I see him running around, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> he's, up, he's up there, huh? Exactly. Like, like, yeah, I'm like, whoa. Am I looking at two, this directly? Yeah. Right? To see two young kids make a, a splash that big. Also, hashtag A-class is dead. I'm just going to start trying that. <laughs> like, what's A-class is dead, bro. Like, you were, we're, we're producing pro, like, factory-level caliber riders out of school boy like a class is dead like hashtag it guys like start that that can finish top 15 top 10 out of school boy that's ridiculous like <laughs> that's it it's it, it's ridiculous um so expect to, in 21 for that for that uh that roster to look a lot like the loretta's b class like people are gonna start <laughs> bumping up and we're gonna start seeing more loretta loretta's kids be top 10 top 15 their first their first outing um, yep. it's, it's almost a guarantee. So at, at this point, uh, Meg, walk us through who you think the, uh, uh, one of the best performing privateers was for the 250 class and maybe some other notables that stood out to you. Um, I was, I was really pumped to see, um, Joey crown did really well this week. Uh, yeah. you gotta say, hey, um, I was really pumped to see him up there. Um, you know, uh, he's had a couple, uh, so, so results, uh, but we all know he's really fast. Yeah. So I was, I was just waiting on, on him to get a good, a good weekend. And, and this was a good one to see him finish up 16th. Um, every week we talk about Jerry Robin, the guy's consistent, uh, putting in the top 20 again. And uh, I mean, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't uh, ride that second moto, but he had a really good first moto uh, in uh, finishing with that 16th. So I was pumped to see Jerry out there um, and still, you know, doing, doing well. Yep. And then, um, obviously, you know, another guy who's been doing this whole outdoors was Stank Dog. Stank Dog, I'm still happy to see him out there. Yep. I always keep an eye on him every time, every week. Crowd favorite, right? Definitely. <laughs> no, yeah, all those, all those guys are continuing to keep progressing, keep getting close to that top 20, to the top 15s, and making a name for themselves. So uh, that's been awesome. Um, one guy who knows a little bit about uh, the pro racing scene and what it takes to get to that next level is our next, uh, is our guest, um, for this week, it's going to be the one, the only, the 722 Adam Antignap, and we're going to get into that right now. What's up, everybody? We're back, and we are here with a very special guest, the one, the only, the legend, Mr. Adam Antignap, 7 Deuce Deuce. What's up, Adam? What's going on, man? What's up, boys? Just hanging out, chilling. Uh, it's, all, it's, all, it's all love, man. Um, yeah, we've been really excited to get you on. Um, we, we see that you're doing your thing outdoors. I personally couldn't wait to see you outdoors. Number one, I'm a big 722 fan. Everybody knows I'm real biased, whatever. Say what you want. <laughs> I couldn't wait to see you outdoors, especially with the, with the HEP team. I'm a big fan of the team, what you guys are doing. Um, so, yeah, it's been, it's been really cool to see. So, um, you know, I'll start off with this. We're not used to seeing, you know, 722 outdoors. Like, what prompted you to, to make the switch, man? Because I know, like myself, a lot of your fans are amped to see you outdoors. Yeah, um, I think a lot of it was just wanting to be better for Supercross. Um, Twisted T and uh, HEP Motorsports uh, needed another rider to do outdoors, and it was kind of like I had the opportunity to do it, and I've never done it before. 
and uh, and my racing career. So I was pretty stoked to uh, to get the opportunity and just see what I could do outdoors. It's been it's been really tough so far, but um, I'm learning a lot every week. I'm learning a lot, and um, I'm definitely improving on the practice track, improving on the weekend. Yeah. Uh, I I wish I would have been a little bit better by now, but um, I really think I have a good shot at. Um, getting a top 20, especially after that second moto last week, I was looking at a 22nd within like fingers length and uh, I made a few mistakes on the last lap. So just looking forward to getting a couple good starts at Paula mm -hmm. and uh, really trying hard to get a couple points before the end of the season. Oh, definitely. It's super attainable, man. Honestly, like, like I said, uh, the, the, it's just great to see you outdoors, but also like you are progressing. Like if people go back and look at the stats, they, they can see like you're, you're getting better each and every week. Um, and it's not to take lightly like this season. I don't know if, if, if you've noticed Adam, but like everybody down to like 33rd place has elevated 2020. Everyone's just up their game so much, even like the three digit guys who we don't see every weekend, they're the local dudes. They're, they're elevating their stuff. So the fact that you're even out there and, and you are progressing, it, it speaks volumes in my opinion. So. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a little bit different because like at Supercross, uh, I know every single guy that makes top 40. Yeah. Yep. Um, when I go to the line, I know um, each and every one of them by name. I know I say, what's up. You know, sometimes there's like one new kid mm -hmm. on the block that'll make the top 40, but like the first week at Loretta's, I'm not kidding you. I didn't know 20 of the 40 guys on the line. Like I, I really didn't. I, I've never even seen them before. I've never heard of them. Um, especially going back east to Loretta's. I've, I like, I was like, who is this guy? You know what I mean? And and they're all they're they're rippers. These guys are going really fast. They're they're definitely not a joke on a dirt bike. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's kind of been the toughest and the weirdest part about outdoors is, you know, no disrespect to those guys, but I know if you put me on a super cross track next to them, I'll, I'll blow their doors off, um, especially in the whoop section, you know, but um, it's been, it's been a learning curve. Outdoors is a totally different animal. Um, it's, it's a lot more kind of just like letting it fly where in super cross, if you let it fly, you'll be on the ground. And I think that's why a lot of guys don't do, Supercross as much is because you have to be so technical in what you're doing in Supercross and in outdoor you kind of just like oh there's a big swap just kind of hold it pinned and it'll it'll buff out so mm -hmm. um, just getting used to that you know getting used to a little bit more of an edge I'm really a, a precise rider um, I've been really really smooth in my whole career and uh, it's it's what I like to do but outdoors you know, you just can't do that. You, you can't be, you can be smooth in certain parts, but um, you have to twist the throttle. You know, you have to yeah. really crank on that thing and, uh, and pull those cables on the weekend. So just getting used to that and trying to improve each and every week. Um, yeah. And just, and moving forward to the last round, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Like you, you said it very well. Um, so like you are like, you know, really very proficient, to to play it down a little bit at uh, at Supercross, man, you 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 do the damn thing. Um, but when it goes to outdoors, like, what's one thing that you think was like the biggest learning curve, the biggest thing that you needed to improve on when you first got onto the track for uh, for Loretta's? Uh, I would say just right off the bat, um, not driving it so deep into the corner and just stuffing it in there. Mm. Um, in Supercross, uh, my suspension's really, you know. And my suspension outdoor is really good, but it's just, it's totally different. Yeah. Um, the ruts are super thick outdoors and it's super heavy. And mm -hmm. uh, like most of you people know, I'm, I'm a big dude. So when the bike, when the momentum of the bike slows down, I slow down a lot, you know, and it's hard to kind of get back going, especially at, if you guys seen Loretta's one, the track was just so thick and it was so, um, it was so gummy yeah. and uh, it was really, really heavy feeling. And, what I was doing is I was driving it super deep into the corners and then I would almost like stick and then, uh, um, and then I'd come out of the corner, which in Supercross, you know, there's those bull turns and that's kind of where I've had my problem in Supercross is the middle of the corner mm -hmm. is driving it in super hard and then kind of over braking, stopping and then driving out of the corner mm -hmm. where outdoors I've had to figure out how to stay light on my brakes coming in and kind of flow and then, you know, put the effort into um, almost keep the bike lighter in the middle of the corner and then mm -hmm. try to flow through the middle of the corner. So that way I keep my exit speed up. So yeah. that's, um, that's one of the biggest and one of the 1 million things I've learned, um, <laughs> doing outdoor so far. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say that's the biggest thing that was an eye opener at the first round. Okay, definitely. Like, and another thing from the first rounds that I noticed, I, you can, I think you could do the top three, um, was there was a lot of yellow, um, kind of like getting either good starts or up front, like, <laughs> And the one thing that me, me and Manny go back and forth on this, we always talk about it. People keep giving the Suzuki so much shit about, oh, they're outdated, they're blah, blah, blah. I, don't, I didn't see many other brands that had as consistent starts, num- stay together, number one, for, the whole, for all of the, the soupy motos. And like, they, they look like they're awesome bikes. Like, I don't get why they catch so much flack. Like, like do, you, do you hear that around the pits? People it's like talking crap on Suzuki's and then like, you, you start racing with them and you're ahead of them. Like, do you, do you, do you hear all that like negative buzz? Um, it's funny. Cause I'm hearing less and less of it lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, right. It's yeah. kind of, it's kind of what you're saying. It, and, and the funniest thing about it is, um, um, I don't know if you can cuss on the show, but whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Let it, let it fly. Um, <laughs> well, people talk a lot of shit about the kickstarting of the bike. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. funny because I'll bet you 90% of them have a two stroke at home that they kickstart also. Yeah, exactly. So um, it's, it's just really, it's really funny to me that people rip so hard mm-hmm. on the kickstarting of the bike. And like 90% of the time, when you hear people talk about Suzuki's or talk yeah. bad about them, it's mostly like, Oh, you still have to kick it or they're heavy. Yeah. Um, you know, it's weird because like you said, um, the Suzuki's didn't break down during the soupy motos. Yeah. And, um, we've been getting consistent, great starts. Um, there's something about that bike that is really, really good off the line. Mm -hmm. And obviously, um, we're making it work. JGR has a full factory effort. They can pretty much do whatever they want to do to the bike, you know, as far as, changing things and manufacturing things and mm-hmm. and doing that stuff but you know HEP Suzuki we obviously have gotten a ton better over the years and yeah. we're just we keep improving 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 but by no means necessary do we have the resources that JGR does mm-hmm. and um as you can see with Max Anstey our bike is right there so yeah, um yeah, yeah it, it's right there mm-hmm. and that Olin suspension we got working really good with Clark Jones I mean, I really believe, and I've had multiple people come up to me and say, you know, our bike looks like it works better than the JGR bike chassis wise. And, you know, I, I believe it does. I, I think our, uh, our suspension guy, Clark Jones and crew chief has done an excellent job with the bike. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy how good um, our chassis feels and how good our bike setup is, especially for the nationals. Oh, most definitely. And I will say, it, they are super trick looking. You get a nice looking Suzuki with like the gold uh, fork tubes and the, you know, the mm. blue wheels. Like what mm. looks better than that? What looks better? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't know nothing that looks better than that. Come on, Dave. Right? Come on, baby. They're sick. They're, they're, they're such sick. Like, plus, I mean, out right out of the box, they turn great. Now, I'm not getting paid by Suzuki. I ride a Cali, you know. <laughs> But like, yeah, but two on top of that, and we got the twisted T with the yellow can on the side. I mean, dude, the twisted T logo looks good. It does. The gear looks good. It's the, solid. Like, like the, I think like um, the design of the bike looks good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we got the bikes getting out of the hole now, and they're getting out front. I mean, yeah. a Suzuki is a good bike. I'm That's sorry. Good. I apologize that you have to be a man and you have to kickstart your bike, but the bike is good. The it's, bike's really good. They're solid. And if everyone just like got their head of their ass, they are very affordable. Now we always talk about the everyday rider. We can't afford the new, you know, the brand new latest and greatest, whatever the new modified bike is every year. Suzuki is a solid, solid contender in both classes. And usually you can save a couple grand if you go to that bike. The average rider. I think it's more than a couple grand right now. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy. It's almost like they're giving bikes away. And the average yeah. rider, you're not your lap time is gonna go from whatever it is, like eight minutes a lap to eight minutes a lap. You know what I mean? You're not yeah. you're getting a KTM. I mean, it's true. Go, bro. It's you true. I mean? It's a hundred percent true. The only thing I think really, I mean, obviously, um, you're gonna benefit as a rider um with the new ergonomics of the bikes and the fuel injection depending on how late of a bike you had you know if you had a carbureted bike i mean 
don't get me wrong. I have a new appreciation for two strokes yeah. um, because of Red Bull straight rhythm. I think they have a place and yeah. I do like my two stroke, but two strokes suck <laughs> compared to the new 450s, the yeah. fuel injection and the, and the power delivery. There's a time and a place for a two stroke. I think two strokes are super fun. Yeah. They're, they're badass bikes and that's where we came from. That's where we started. And there's mass amounts of respect there for those bikes. Yeah. But if you're coming off that bike, and you're getting one of these new fuel injected bikes, you're going to get so many seconds of lap time. But now, if you're if you're looking between, you know, a 2000, what is it, 2012 when Yamaha had a fuel injected bike? Is oh, it 2012 or 13? 2010, something like that when they switched. Yeah, so if yeah. you so if you had a 2012 mm -hmm. and you know you're a novice and you're getting you're going to a 2020 Yamaha. It's going to be a little bit better, but the ergonomics and the chassis and most of it's there. Yeah. You know, for us, we need that updated technology and the best stuff we can get. But yeah. you got to think, you know, with what we're doing, um, the chassis and, and the way that we build the bikes is so much different than what comes off a of showroom floor. We're already so many years in advance. And plus, not only that, but the bikes that we have are like, are so gnarly yeah. if a normal person got on it you'd be like i'm riding like a brick wall there this thing doesn't even work it has to be at a certain speed i mean especially my bike you know yeah i'm 205 pounds if you got on my bike you'd be like dude i can't even ride this thing it's just <laughs> deflecting everywhere so yeah. um you know it's just it's so funny how many people are like oh the new latest and greatest factory stuff it's like no bro you need a bike that's set up for you yes. that's good that's not gonna break it's reliable as long as you take care of your shit it's gonna be fine and you're gonna be ripping i mean jerry robin did it back in the day loretta's on that super old i think it was like right. a cr 250 right yeah, yeah. like a and, 19 and he, like 1920s <laughs> cr 250 <yeah. laughs> something <laughs> like that but yeah i mean he was doing it so Talent, talent's talent. The recipe's the recipe, baby. I've been told that for a long time. Amen. Preach. Big facts right there. Big facts. Uh, so yeah, if you guys are looking for a new bike, don't don't bullshit on the Suzuki. They're they're good bikes. Get one. Save yourself some money. Get it set up for you. The seven two two set it. Um, you heard it. You can stamp it. Um, so again, getting, getting back go. to the, getting back to the races. Um, we've had some mix ups, man. Honestly, we've seen the in the four fifty year class. We've seen. AC give the chase to, to Zacco. We've seen Barsha sneak a wheel in. Tomax kind of hit or miss every weekend. So a lot of storylines. 250, we've seen Ferrandis and J Mark go back and forth. Cooper sneaking in there. Um, you know, you, you saw RJ get a win. Um, what's your take on the on the two classes? Somebody that's in it every weekend that gets like, you know, probably no closer, um, no per per person to the action than the actual riders. Um, what's your take on on both classes right now? Like, who do you who do you think's gonna take it down to the down to the wire this weekend? Who do you think's gonna walk away with the thing? Like, what are your what are your thoughts? Um, starting off with the two fifty, I love Jeremy Martin. I've been a Jeremy hmm. Martin fan for a really long time, especially all that he's been through with his back and you know just just dude is an animal. Yeah. Um, Hard worker. He he's just I really don't think he's gonna win this weekend. Mm -hmm. Um. I think there's a shot. I think he has, he has the speed. He has the heart. He has the determination. Mm -hmm. um, that star Yamaha bike is unbelievable. He's, so he's got, he's got bike against him. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that he has against him, I've never seen a mofo ride so fucking fast at Paula other than Ferrandis, dude. dude. I'm right? serious. Oh, Cause God. we go down there, you know, I go down there and I'm a Paula kind of like, regular mm -hmm. and dude Ferrandez is the fastest guy I don't care who you put there I don't care if it's AC if it's anybody you put Ferrandez on the track he's the fastest dude at Paula and he was there every single week and every day I was there mm. you know it's just and I didn't see J Mart there one time I mean his best J Mart's best shot to turn this season around mm -hmm. was was I particularly think Melville and yeah. I think he just didn't have the bike. Mm. I think that if you put J Mart, um, not necessarily on a Star Yamaha, but if you put J Mart on that factory connection bike mm. with as much horsepower as that Star Yamaha has, mm. I'm saying J Mart wins. Just period. Yeah. I don't think that the chassis is bad on the Geico bike. I just mm. think he's short horsepower. And yeah. it's just an undeniable fact. And for me, this weekend, um, I just really think that Ferrandez is going to take it. He's just 
he's unstoppable. He's not unstoppable, but at Paula, with how many times he's ridden that place and how comfortable he is in that spot, mm-hmm. and I bet I know he's been living in California. Um, whether you like it or not, the flight takes a toll on you. Um, you know, being on a different time zone takes a toll on you. Mm-hmm. Everything kind of just messes you up that little bit, and Ferrandez is even has just that little bit more of an advantage going yeah. into the last round. So, um, unfortunately, I'm going to go with Ferrandez. Um, I really love Jamar, like I said. I don't. I like Ferrandez too. I think he's a pretty cool dude. Um, yeah. I've met him a couple of times. He always says what's up to me. So, um, it's just it's really going to be tough. He's there's going to have to be a mistake out of Ferrandez, which we did see this year. You know, um, yeah. he floundered one of those rounds. It's you know, bad starts will get you, but mm-hmm. you, I, I don't know. I just feel like the last couple of rounds, Ferrandez has been on fire. His starts have been better. He's moving to the front. He's making yeah. better decisions. He's not keep being frantic like he was at Redbud. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he, I think he's just going to – I I personally think he'll probably just go 1-1 one, one and wrap the championship up. I, I agree It's going to be tough. I, I, I agree, man. Like you said, um, I think we even talked a little bit about Millville – um, you can see it in that last moto, moto two. J Mart kind of picked up the deficit. Like he 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 gained some seconds on him and made those last ditch efforts to make a pass yeah. on an underpowered bike. And it's almost like comical when you watch Ferrandis on that last triple um, before the finish. Uh, Ferrandis was what like I think he even scrubbed one or two one or two times. And J Mart and everyone else were just stretching for their lives, you know. And and the other thing too that people have to understand, J Mart's tiny. Yeah. Yeah. Jamar is not a big guy. It's not like he's underpowered because he's too big on the bike. Yeah. yeah. Jamar is a tiny kid, dude. He he should have plenty of power on that bike. And exactly. it's it's just that those those Star Yamaha's those bikes are superhuman, dude. They're yeah. so fast. I mean, dude, oh I that uphill triple at Colorado. Yeah. I mean, dude, yeah. that was hard for me, bro. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> and he was icing it, bro. Yeah, easy. Yeah. It's crazy. That's it's, it's a problem. What, what'd you take on the 450s? Um, I think Zach Osborne wants it the most. Yep. I think that Eli Tomac had a kid. I think he probably took some time off with his, with his new kid, which is absolutely fine. I think he lost a little motivation um, from Supercross because he's been wanting that Supercross championship for so many years. And you literally, you can't blame the guy, dude. If you win something that you've been after for that many years and you finally get it, there's going to be a, there's going to be a piece of relief in your body. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, he's won the outdoor championship so many times. And I think he's proven himself so many times. I think he just was a little lax coming in and maybe thought he could just do it. And those Mm -hmm. guys were on, those guys were on the edge. Um, I think at the first round, Zach Osborne kind of surprised himself a little bit. I think he wanted to win. I think he expected to win, but I think he surprised himself at the first round. Mm -hmm. And once that happened, I think it was over for the rest of the crew. Um, Adam Cincerillo, I think he probably should have won the championship because he was the fastest guy. Mm -hmm. Um, But I personally think that he didn't come into this championship like he will next year. I think he came into it more thinking like, I'd love to get some wins. I'd love to do really good in the championship. And then um, all of a sudden, Adam Cincerillo was only, what, 10 points down or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, oh, my gosh, this is really possible. And I just don't think he had the mind, the right mindset from the beginning to be doing that. And I think he kind of, I think it dropped on him late. And I just think that Adam is going to do really great at Paula this weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've never seen anybody in the entire, I've never watched or witnessed another rider with more determination than Zach Osborne in my whole career. When I watched him at Vegas, when I was on that line for the main event and I watched that 250 class unfold, I said, this man will go to the ends of the earth to do what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. And I think he'll do that this weekend. I think they'll have 25 motors at Husqvarna on backup sitting there. <laughs> yeah. And I think they'll have 
you know, as many bikes as they can ready to go. They'll have the parts and all the stuff laid out next to the bike every time he comes off the track. Yep. I think he'll have a moose tube in his front tire and his rear tire. And I think that Zach Osborne is going to come home. Um, it's going to come to Paula and he's going to wrap up the championship. I don't think he's going to um, do anything more than he has to. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, if the, in the first moto, the opportunity presents itself to beat Adam Cinturillo and win, mm -hmm. um, I think he'll, I think he'll make a smart choice and probably try to make the pass. He won't force it too much um, because he doesn't want to throw it away. But honestly, I would probably look to see Zach Osborne win the championship in the first moto at Paula. Stamp it. I, I have to agree. Honestly, like I, I agree 100%. I mean, Zach, you can see in the way he rides that he just, he wants it more. You're a hundred percent. Right. Um, and it's, it's been really cool to see him like, um, just come from, like you said, like a bad moto and still like that followed up with that, you know, that, that next weekend, get those points back or even manage the, the points gap to where he's not overexerting himself, but he's still making up points every weekend. I think he's a very smart and methodical rider, which is almost, it's kind of rare to find, you know what I mean? A guy that has the hard work, the determination, the talent, and the great race craft where he's smart enough to really, you know, not overdo it too much. Um, I think he's got the full package. So I'm excited to see how this one shakes out. Yeah, and too, like, back to what I said, I just think that Zach – well, I think Zach truly believes that he's going to win the championship more than anybody else on the line believes it. Yeah. I think that's just – I think that's it, period. And you can see it in the way that he rides. And, and it's like when you're watching – and I'm there on the weekend mm -hmm. um, and you watch the races afterwards, mm -hmm. you can tell that everybody else knows and he knows that he's the guy to beat. Yes. And he acts like it week in and week out. Like, you know, in, um, in Supercross this year where you could tell like Tomac was the guy to beat, like yeah. everybody was aiming for that guy. Yep. And that was like the standard. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Zach Osborne's that guy right now. You could mm -hmm. tell that, the the energy and the aura around him is mm -hmm. like I'm the champ and you guys need to come you need to come get me and I think that will happen for Adam Cincerillo um either next year depending on his supercross season or the year after that um I truly believe that Adam Cincerillo is going to be probably one of the greatest supercrossers and motocrossers in the history um like of ever in these next couple of years, I think you're going to watch that unfold. I just, when you watch Adam Cincerillo and the maturity that he's going through lately, mm -hmm. um, it just seems to me like it's going to get scary quick. It, I could see him winning like a lot, a lot of races. And yeah. I know that things have tightened up and it's gotten within tents, mm -hmm. but I think that Adam is going to figure out what it's going to take to be there every single weekend and win races week in and week out. And I just think, I think it's going to be a long reign of Adam Cincerillo championships here coming up. Wow. I like that take. I'm a big AC yes. fan. So I like I that agree. take a lot. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, guys, you're hearing it first from seven two two, So you know, it's going to happen. Um, Adam getting, getting back to your personal program. Um, everyone, you know, we, we love all the things that you get into mainly the music. Um, I know I have my favorite seven two two song, rip it, right to swerve favorite of all time um when are we gonna hear some some new music you know some more projects like every i know everyone's always like super ant when you have new projects drop in is there anything in the future that we should be looking out for um yeah so i have uh i have a segment that's coming out i don't know if i'm probably leaking this or not but i have a segment with uh depth that uh is going to be um it's going to be exclusive to a couple really big platforms. And we got some pretty big deals going on with that. Um, and it's going to be featuring two new songs, one of them called Last Breath and another one called Always Come Back Around. And uh, I think that one's going to be, that one's probably going to be one of the coolest videos I've ever done in my whole career. So I'm really looking forward to that. I think it, it takes a different look into, uh, into what I've done and who I am and, and what I want to leave um, as my legacy so um, and to the guys that are doing it are absolutely all time um, you guys seen all the moto the movie um, yeah. creations and yeah. you see how well and um, you know perfectly 
groomed through that those those videos are they're just they're unbelievable yeah. uh how good they are and uh, how long they've been doing it it's just crazy so um i'm very grateful and thankful to be working with those guys and uh it really came around because um you know these two songs were uh, were so like they're so good they're so mm-hmm. freaking good it's like i really think this one song last breath is going to take my whole career to another level um i think it's going to open some pretty some pretty big doors for me yeah so um i'm excited for it to come out i think the whole moto industry and the whole world's going to enjoy it so um i'm excited i got my fingers crossed on that one i got some some really good people behind me and i think i think it's just going to blow everybody's wig back it's going to be sick (laughs) Uh, everyone's whenever you drop something new there's at least like two weeks of just everyone losing their mind like just your your stories on ig is like a million strong of people just reposting liking jamming to the songs like on their way to the track like it's you you kind of shut down like the whole like moto scene for at least at least two weeks with every new <laughs> so, um that's funny and it's uh yeah we 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 love the stuff you do. It's so cool to see a professional racer that's that that strays from the norm is also into something um so different, so unique, and is really good at it. So um, hands down to you, man. Like like huge round of applause. That's just it's so awesome to see that and and to see like so many people in moto embrace it. And I know so so much of your so many of your fans come through and they're just spitting all your lines and stuff. And it's like it, it's such a cool sight, man. Yeah, shout out um. Shout out to my bikes too late. It just uh, it just got over a million views just on YouTube hey. today. Oh, cool. um, oh, congrats! Yes, it's it's got over a million on Spotify, um, and right under a million on uh, Apple Music. So it's yeah. it's clear between all the platforms. It's clear over three, I think like three point five million views on my bikes too late. Yeah. So that's. I mean, for I mean, for a little dude from Lompoc to make a motocross a, a song about how cool his dirt bike is is yeah. uh, is pretty crazy to think that it's got uh, almost three point five million views. I mean, it's it's I, there's just so many artists that dream of that, and I'm yeah. messing around on with a freaking dirt bike song. Um, <laughs> doing 3.5 million views talking about ain't nobody's bike as tight as mine and uh factory recluse clutches so um <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty cool it's um it's just it blows me away every day that how many people come up to me and quote that shit it's just like yeah you got to be kidding me i can't believe i made that much of an impact on a on a silly song like that and it, and it was like it's funny too because i was making the song mm-hmm. and uh you know, you don't think of the, you don't think of that stuff as you're doing it, but um, I wanted it to project to just be like, yeah, my bike is, is super cool and everybody can have a bike this cool and everybody thinks their bike this cool. But yeah. what I didn't know is how many people that would resonate it with and just how many, you know, because everybody in their own way, whether you have a 1990 YZ125 or you got a 2020 crf 450 if you put a new a new sprocket and chain on your 1990 yeah. you're like my bike is so sick right now i can't wait to ride you know yep. what i mean and then yep. you get a brand new 2020 yeah. and it's like the same feeling and it's like <laughs> it's just so crazy yep. and i'm just so glad people got that it wasn't about the louis vuitton seat yeah it wasn't about the gold hubs and the black rims and all the Gucci shit on the bike. It wasn't about that. It was a song about that you could go out and sing and look at your bike in the garage and say, ain't nobody's bike as tight as mine. And just, and and it's for you. It's not for anybody else. It's for you. It's for you to jam out and enjoy what you got. Cause that's all that really matters is have fun on your dirt bike. And as long as you think it's sick, shit. Run Fuck it. the haters. <laughs> exactly. I will say. You know what I mean? I will say the Gucci seat, though, dude. Like, like, or was, was it LV or was it Gucci? It's, it was Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. Louis yeah, Vuitton. sorry. The Louis Vuitton seat. Like, bro, come on. That like, dude. I had saw it. that. Like, <laughs> come <laughs> on. That's dude, the tightest I, I, shit I've ever seen. I know. I still um, I look back on that post and it's got like fifteen thousand likes on it. And yeah. that was back when I, you know, I didn't, I got almost a hundred thousand followers now, but that was back when I had like 50,000 followers. So, 
um, it's just crazy to think like, you know, like all that stuff. And it was like, it was Clint and I in the garage and we were just thinking of stupid shit. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like, what could we do to just make this thing sick? And I'm like, dude, I want a full on gold clutch cover. And then he's like, dude, we should do like a Louis Vuitton seat and get real Louis Vuitton leather. I'm like, how the fuck am I going to pull that <laughs> off, bro? You know what I mean? And yeah. it was just like, and somehow we ordered it from Italy and got the material and found like a guy that hooked us up because he knew how it was like, it was the craziest shit how it all worked out, bro. Like so crazy. And then, you know, like we spent hours coming up with that graphics kit and trying to come up with something that nobody had ever thought of. Yeah. And like, it's just so funny. Like, you know how the CRF, was like all sideways lined up on that with like yep. the Louis Vuitton. Yeah. It, and like what it was like eight months later, they came out with the Supreme logo exactly like in the same exactly direction like across, like identical. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then like, and then it's just like, it was so funny too, because we had the ride red down the middle of the bike, like, yep. and it, it went into the bar pad, like the bar pad incorporated the lettering. And just uh, the highlighter yellow with the color scheme, it was just, it was so designer. And I think the cool thing about that was that it made, and then, and then the little Louis Vuitton gold rim stickers with yeah. the Louis Vuitton tire logos. I mean, the bike made it go, it, it brought it another um, yeah. attribute to the video where people, people just wanted to come to the video to see the damn bike. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So like you wanted to see the damn bike and then all of a sudden you hear the song and you're like, Oh, this is so sick. <laughs> and then you got me in like a gold fly logo Jersey with like a goal. It was just, it was cool. It was cool. It, it came together for sure. No, it, it was, it was, it was, it was lit. Honestly, like I think that bike needs its own Instagram page. Cause like <laughs> the thing, the thing was so solid. So um, again, was. hats off to you. Um, master mechanic, Mr. Clint Lund. Uh, we're we're going to get him on the show pretty soon. Um, we got a project, awesome. we got a project coming up with Lund. That's going to be pretty dope for 2021. So I want to drop it quite yet, but, um, you know, we have to go. get on it, Adam. Uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty sick, but, uh, yeah, Clint, it's such a good dude. And like his eye for detail combined with like what you had going on at the time, like there's no better duo to get a dope ass bike together. Like I'll just point blank. You know what I mean? That's what we do, bro. <laughs> that, that was so sick um adam um thank you again for the for the time um guys you know if you've seen anything that we've done lately over the past three four years um you know adam's usually been a big part of it with our internship program with our fan experience program um adam was really integral in getting it kicked off um so adam, i just want to say thank you for the continued support over the years thank you for making every fan who signs up with you their dreams pretty much come true um i don't think people realize just how much the riders are part of the program. Like you guys give such good feedback and you guys really care about every single fan. Um, so Adam, a huge thank you for all you do for us and always having our backs and uh, doing some cool shit with us. So um, very, very- Yeah, good. no problem, dude. No problem, very, very, dude. I appreciate it, bro. Like I support you a hundred percent cause I know you work hard and you got a good heart and uh, that's what I'm all about. You know what I mean? We need to spread more love in this world, especially in 2020, well, you know what I mean? I so I'm just trying to, I'm trying to do my part and, uh, and you're a good dude. So keep up the good work. Yeah, well, most definitely. Um, guys, please check out Adam. Um, check him out on Instagram, check him out on Facebook. Please check out the HEP Suzuki team. They're doing amazing things. Um, grab yourself some Twisted Tea as well. You could be just like 722. Um, rep the guys that uh, that give a lot to our sport, like Adam and like his team. Um, be sure to pick up all the stuff that Adam has dropping. These dudes got so much going on. I'm probably forgetting stuff. You've got merch at this point. You got songs. You got so much going on. Um, show this guy some love. I know a lot of a lot of the, the guys that are that are supportive of the collective. They're huge fans of Seven Two Two. Um, Adam, please keep kicking ass. Uh, we're rooting for you every single weekend. And uh, like I said, I'm just I'm just pumped to see you out there. We know some great things are coming down the road for you. Cool. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for having me on the show and uh, I enjoyed it. No worries, man. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, that's been Adam. All right, guys, that was Adam Intignap. Uh, again, thank you to Adam uh, for taking the time out to talk to us. And guys, again, please check out HEP Suzuki. That team is doing some amazing things. And uh, all you guys talking shit on the Suzuki, stop it. They're good bikes. Get yourself one, save some, some, save some money. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a solid, it's a solid machine.
Uh, Stamp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, Manny, before we get into the next segment, um, I want to talk about two things with you. So yeah. we had we had a little bit of beef, a little bit of shade thrown <laughs> going back and forth between Jet Lawrence and Justin Cooper. A um, couple of your mama joke. No, I'm kidding. Other uh, <laughs> about who's you know professionalism when Justin Cooper brought his dog up on the podium. Yeah. Um, and then Cooper kind of rebuttaled back with, uh, yeah, well, eating donuts ain't too professional either. Um, what was your take on this? Is this just like uh, a grade school cafeteria fight? Like, what's going on with yeah, these guys? It was a couple – it was still – you gotta, you remember how young these guys are. There's a couple young guys, they're, they're, they're still throwing jabs at each other. Nothing big. I, I don't think it's anything that, to, to, to lose your, your panties over or anything. Like, I, it was a couple jabs. Uh, I mean, it, it happens. I think it, in any sport, in any sport. I mean, you can people talk junk in every sport. So I think it's just it's funny when we get to see it in motocross when they take a little jab at each other, just because yeah. everybody's always so monotone and things like that. Or so it's it's good to see guys relax and show a little personality. And I and that's just something actually you know that that I like that guys are starting to loosen up a little bit. Yeah, I, I do. Like, I'm here for the smoke. Like, anytime, I'm, I'm here for all the smoke. All I'm here the smoke. for all the – like, especially, like, going back to, to our Supercross, when Davalos and Barsha were getting ready to throw hands, I was ready. I was like, bro, where's the popcorn? Let's go. Start throwing some hands. Like, I, I'm here for it. So, um, when I saw that, I was like, all right, maybe they're going to pop off a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's like, both those dudes are just chatting at this point. Like, talking about donuts and puppies, like, all right, yeah. like, you guys are just bored, like, whatever. Yeah. I kind of thought I'd turn into something a little bit more, just me being an instigator. I want to start gassing it like, yo, do you hear me say with your girl though? Like, start, <laughs> start, you know, start going back and forth. But um, no, I, I'm glad it kind of got like yeah, resolved, swept under the rug. Cause like at the end of the day, we want we want, you know, there have to be any problems around the pits, but yeah. it was cool for a little bit just to have a little bit of beef going on. Yeah, and, a, little, a little tension. <laughs> exactly. We'll, we'll see how, uh, how that plays out for Paula. You know what I mean? Maybe they'll, yeah. We'll, they'll run into each other, but uh, yeah, it, it should be a good one. Um, also, we saw Malcolm Stewart on a KTM, and the minute I saw that, I sent you the the the, oh, in the IG real quick, the post. And I was yeah. like, "Yo, what's going on?" Like, we saw him in Cowie a couple of weeks ago, you know, as a departure from the MCR team, and now he's mm -hmm. on a KTM, which I'm guessing he bought. Like, what what can we take from this? Like, is he kind of hunting around for brands? Has he found one that he likes? Like, what's going on? I don't know. I feel like I feel like we we went through this before when he was shopping around for for a ride or deciding whether he was going to do his privateer program or something like that. Everybody was like, "Oh, we see him on this bike this week. See him on this bike next week." I don't know. I don't know how what to take from it. I um I mean, I'm I'll be happy to see him on any bike. We know he's going to shred. We know he's super fast. Yeah. Um so but I don't I don't know if we have this if this is linked to any type of uh official program or anything or if he's just trying to figure out and put a privateer program together. Um, what do you think? Um, I think he's kind of just searching for a bike that really feels good to him. And um, if I'm not mistaken, we saw him on a KTM or like a Husky um, two seasons ago when he was almost in the same predicament. I think it was before the whole MCR deal shook yeah. out. But um, it was kind of a number, a number of, uh, um, I don't know, I guess of things we can read into, right? So yeah. we heard he was going to the Star Yamaha program. Well, it looks like he might be doing his own privateer deal, or he could be grabbing a spot on the Rocky Mountain ATV MC group because it looks like uh, maybe Bogle might not be coming back for next season. So, I mean, take it how you want. I mean, he could he could have his own privateer outfit, but it looks like he might be on um, one of the one of the the orange teams for next season. Um, mm -hmm. Also, that could mean because we, we you know, um, Gas Gas is owned by KTM and they're very similar bikes. Maybe he's getting his legs ready for what could be the red KTM of Team Gas Gas, almost identical bikes. Um, he could just be riding that to prep for his for um, you know his uh, entry into that side. So there's a lot of ways you can read into it. Um, he might yeah. be just throwing us off, just riding bikes for fun. You never know. But uh, I'm I'm thinking it's a little bit more than that. So um, I'm excited to see what happens, man. Silly season has been a little bit a little bit crazy, right? Yeah, exactly. So it, it's it's a lot. I think when once the announcements start to pop out, uh, we'll have a lot more to talk about. I think right now we're just you know a lot of speculations of you know it, with not too much to read into yet. Exactly. But either way, nonetheless, we had to talk about it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, now we kind of got that out of the way. It's time for the drip chat. So Manny, um, once we uh, kind of started recording a little bit, um, I think we started talking a little bit about. Um, 
what we thought was the most standout uh, kits, right? So 254.50, same format. And I threw one at you that I don't think many people had in their radar. So I'm pretty proud of this one. And I think it, people agree with me and set up very well this weekend. I'll give you my top two. And that first one being Joey Savacci's um, Just One Kit, the yeah. black, the gray, and the, uh, the highlighter green, um, yeah. or cowboy green, however, however you want to say it, I thought was a super clean and crisp kit for this weekend um joey i think pretty sure he's head to toe um in just one and uh he makes it look good i think he um it it, it offsets what he has in his suzuki pretty well the two highlighter colors um and, and it's it's a little bit of a diff different look mainly i like the cut of the gear too so yeah. it's not like super skin tight like the oh. the like the seven or the um, the active setup from ship. Um, it, it, it has really nice lines. It's super clean, nothing too bulky, not too plain. I thought it was a really nice kit and uh, it, it meshed well with, uh, with the Suzuki as well. Um, and my number two, I'm going to have to go with the Zach Osborne with that fly racing kit. He had a lot of red in it to match with the red plate. I thought it was a cool statement setup, cool statement yeah. kit. Like I'm uh, Mr. Red plate. You know what I mean? Uh, had the matching kit. Um, I like that. That was a strong choice and uh, he, he made it look good. Yeah, I definitely like, uh, that was one fun kit that I did want to talk about, though. You mentioned, though, was that Joey Savacci's kit. That Just One stuff. I've had my eye on that for a couple weeks now, and you've been That's teetering good. on getting into the, to, to the drip check for me because I, I, was, I had my eye on it. I'm like, you know, I don't even know where to get my hands on some of that stuff, but it looks really good, honestly. Like, and I'm just been having my I'm like, oh, what's that? Like, you know, you see it out there. You don't see anybody else in it. So you're like, oh, what's that? It's something different. So I definitely like that kit, and I'm definitely going to have my eye on, you know, on, on it moving forward, definitely. And I'm, I'm sure they'll have some some sick stuff moving into Supercross as well. So oh, I, I definitely like have my eye on that. Um, yep. For me, on the other, um, one of my one of my picks is tied with you. I definitely, I, I was digging the red that Zach Osborne had on. Yep. Um, that was a new one for me. Um, and then it was hard for me. I, I like the, the, the cool gray that uh, AC had on that Fox kit. It, 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 it was a cool gray with like a little bit of silver accents in it. It was just really smooth. Um, I think it's, I think it's, it's hard for me to, to look away when they, when they match the boots with it as well. And I'm just like, oh, that's, that's always <laughs> that's does it. Why. That's because you, know that's I the extra flex. you know I like the kick. So it's like, when you do the kicks with it, it's exactly. like, oh. That's the extra flex too. Cause you know, not many people are going out and buying like $500 exactly. boots to match them with the kit. So when you show out, exactly. that's, the, that's the equivalent of the Gucci loafers with the Gucci bell with the Gucci cap. Exactly. So. Like when I hit them with the shoe, check the feet game. Like, it's like, <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So no, I thought it, the all those guys had uh, um, really, really, really smooth looks, and uh, people are starting to get kitted out, man. I think the days of dudes wearing, you know, kind of off-putting setups is kind of gone, man. I think a lot of people are starting to look at like, especially like gear gear reps of like, hey, how can we make this guy stand out? People are looking at lit kits. It's not just function; they're looking at style as well. Um, and they're really like lit kits are, are a big thing. Drip checks are like a big thing for people now. It's a it's a it's a major reason why we buy the gear we buy. Uh, Manny and I are lucky enough to be fitted with uh, FXR, which we get the function and the style. If I do say so myself, um, yeah. maybe not style on a dirt bike, but we're styling off the dirt bike. But we're sitting on our <laughs> I'm back. A, I'm gonna look good. Trucks. I'm gonna look good regardless. We're, we're looking good. We're looking clean out there in the track. So, um, yeah. So moving on, uh, we've got Paula coming up this weekend. Very unique track in terms of um, it's a track that a lot of the ride the, the pros ride on during the week. Um, we heard you know from Adam that Brandis is there a lot, AC is there a lot. A lot of guys who are in that Cali area um, they ride Paula quite a bit. However, they're saying it's going to be a little bit different in terms of prep. So the guys that you're seeing, um, you know, at at Paula all like every weekend. Uh, they mm -hmm. might not be the guys that are, are shoo-ins to win. And now I'm going to have to agree with Adam. I think um, Ferran is going to be the guy to win the 250s. He's the exception to what I just said. But um, some of the guys that you see there during the week that are constantly, like, logging laps and stuff like that might not be the lap time champs when it comes to, uh, comes to the race. So, Manny, I think it's time that we get into our uh, power rankings for mm -hmm. next week of, uh, or this week in Apollo. Uh, what are you yeah. thinking, Manny? Who's going to be your top three in uh, the 250 and 450? Um, I would say, uh, let's, let's go with 450, um, 450. I just, I think, I think Zach's going to wrap the championship up. I don't know how hard he's going to push. Um, and, and necessarily like whether, I don't know if he's going to, it's different because like, kind of like how seven deuce deuce was saying, we all know Zach is really scrappy and he's really determined rider, but also he's smart. 
So he's not, I don't think he's going to throw it away. I think he, if he, if he wants to get into a little tip or back and forth and scrap to go for the win, it's all going to happen in Moto 1. And if, if, if something happens and it, and it doesn't go that way, he knows how to, how to play it the smart way and, and, and wrap the championship up by Moto 2. Um, but I do think he'll, um, he'll podium both, uh, obviously, both Motos uh, top three. Um, I'm looking, I think Chase Sexton will do really well um, on that track. Um, and I think AC will do well. So I'm looking for them to be in the top three uh, in 450s. Um, and for 250s, um, I, think, I think Shane McElrath will do really well. Um, I definitely think he'll do really well. Um, and obviously, and Dylan's just uh, unbeatable, I think, honestly. Like, it's just – so I think my top three, I think I'm, it'll, it'll be Dylan, uh, J. Martin, Shane, I think. That's, that's what I'm looking for. That's, that's solid. Um, let's see for my picks 450. I'm gonna go with Tomek. Um, he just had too much momentum from last weekend, he's feeling too good. Um, really feeling himself. So, um, and it seems like he got that that monkey off his back, chip off his shoulder. So, mm-hmm. I'm gonna say, uh, we're gonna see Tomac take the overall. I'm gonna say we're gonna see um, AC get that second spot, and I think uh, Zacho is gonna grab the third and lock up the title. Um, I think. I want to say Osborne is going to get a win. I don't think Osborne is going to go like 3-3 three, three for third. I think Osborne is going to go like 1-3 for third. Mm-hmm. Adam's going to go like 2-2. Two, two and um, and Tomac's going to go like 3-1 or something like that and then get the overall that way. So um, I think that's how it's going to shake out. Uh, for 250s, I think Ferranius goes 1-1. One, one. This lights everyone on fire. Mm-hmm. Um, same, like, same thing that, uh, that Adam said. I think we're going to see um, J-Mart probably f- – get like a third i think there's just too many fast guys that are so used to like that type of pile of soil um mm-hmm. and i think um we're gonna see uh maybe justin cooper get that uh get that second spot i will say i, ha- I have a hard time because third i feel like could go to jet lawrence i think the guy's so sick of fourth he's got a fire <laughs> under his ass from the beef that we just talked about with justin cooper um i think he he could be a shoe and so that's my interchangeable spot i think he could be in there okay. for a third so um that one's um yeah that that one's that one's a little tougher. 250, I feel like it's a lot more open. Yeah, it's a lot um, going on. Exactly. Only a few days, you know, we'll tell. And we can, yeah. uh, we, we can have our, our wrap-up of the season. And, and we'll know who our, our, uh, our champions are. Most likely going to be Osborne and Ferrandis. But, you know, yeah. uh, we'll see. <laughs> don't listen to us when it comes to uh, our power rankings. If you're going to be playing fantasy, because I don't want that responsibility on me. That's going <laughs> to put that on Manny. <laughs> That's what we say every week. Um, again, guys, thank you so much for always supporting us and watching. Um, guys, we've got so many um, great opportunities for race fans from all over the world to tag along with their favorite racers um, of all levels in our TCE, MX, and SX, and now Arena Cross internship programs as well as our fan experiences that gives you a chance to go behind the scenes and work with a pro team or be catered by a pro team like you're a true VIP, and that comes complete with passes uh you get uh, tons of tons of swag access to your favorite riders touching the bikes talking to the mechanics talking to the gear, gear guys making connections and having a day that you will just never forget uh as well as our internship program being that stepping stone for you to start your career in one of the racing uh outfits so um mini has done it he's had a complete success again more connections than i have um, and people like Adam Etzik now continue to bring rider, uh, riders and, and, and fans of the sport, um, you know, under his wing for an amazing VIP experience. So we're very grateful, again, to people like Adam and the rest of our riders. Um, we had a very successful TCE uh, Moto Bash ride event here in Wisconsin. Thanks to AJ Catanzaro, our other sponsors, FXR, Evans Coolant, um, and um, this week's sponsored profile of Broke Amateur Racing. Uh, very grateful for those guys always sending us some, um, some really cool stuff. You can see the hat right up there and wearing the beanie. Those guys are uh, out of Utah and uh, they really have a huge commitment to their customers, to their clientele base. And uh, they're all about the grassroots racing. So please guys, check those guys out. Uh, there's going to be a link um, below as well as, well as uh, the links to our other sponsors. So you guys can check out all of their offerings. Uh, Manny, we covered a lot. Uh, we've yeah. got the finale wrapping up this uh, this weekend, so we're definitely going to do this again next week, obviously. Um, Got to say a huge thank you to Manny, a huge thank you to uh, all of you guys. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, check what we have going on, and uh, Manny, I think that's going to be a wrap for us. All right, I'll catch you next week, man. All right, brother, we'll you. I can never lose to you, he too cool. I can never lose to you, I'm
Turn to a global, I can never lose to you. Hey, hey, 